And until next time we gather together around the Word of God, this is Kenneth and Gloria Copeland reminding you that God loves you and we love you and that Jesus is Lord. Well, now everyone in my family's life has changed because when you give to a fruitful ministry, you know that it's going to be a more and more fruit. It's life-changing. Kenneth Copeland's ministry stands on the Word of God. I know that he is a man that gives to God first. I know that he lives by the Word of God, and I want to get involved with a ministry that gives to God so that others can be blessed, so that this world can change for the glory of God. If you'd like information on how you can become a covenant partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries, write Kenneth Copeland, Lock Bag 8, Australia Square, Sydney, New South Wales, 2000. This program has been sponsored by Kenneth Copeland Ministries and its partners in this area. Freedom Fellowship, now a Rhema Family Church in Brisbane, preaching God's word of salvation and His delivering power each Sunday. We'd like to invite you, your family and friends to join us at Rhema today to experience this life-changing power of God through His word. Rhema Family Church, Brisbane, where good things are happening as we declare Jesus is Lord over Brisbane. Thanks for joining our show today. Hello and welcome. On our program, we'll show you how to make your home safe and Fred Eakins will talk to us about everybody's favourite subject, tax. I can think of a few things I'd rather talk about, like how to get a good night's sleep. Judy will tell us how to do that. And Dr James Wright talks about his new book. In our first story, reporter Daniel Stepniak checks out neighbourhood security. Yes. Well, it's yet another rainy day, and here we are in Cranquil, suburbia. With us is Susan Geeson of the Australian Institute of Criminology, co-author of a little booklet called Designing Out Crime, in which we're given very helpful hints on how to reduce or totally eliminate the risk of property crime. Susan, what do you notice looking around this backyard? This is a very typical suburban backyard and the people who live here probably think it's quite secure. But I can see a few things that I would find very interesting if I were a thief. Now, one of them is the landscaping. If you look at the fence and the landscaping, you can see that a thief could use the landscaping as a kind of a ladder. He could climb up and over the fence. The other thing about the fence is that the neighbors can't see in. Now, looking around further, the garden furniture is a bit of a problem too because you can pull out that garden furniture, get onto it and get onto the roof. And you can get in through the roof of a lot of houses. The same for the ladder. It's very important not to leave tools around the house for robbers to use. You're just giving them a perfect opportunity to rob you. And looking further at the windows, if you're going to have lots of windows and sliding doors in your house, you have to be aware that this is a security problem. They look good, but they're much easier to get into than normal, a normal house with lots of brick and water. There's a variety of ways of dealing with glass and sliding doors. One is that you really need to have little bolt locks in the windows, in the sides of the windows, so that the thieves, even if you have them open a little way, the thieves can't get them open the whole way. So that means that you can get some air, but people can't get in. Another thing that some people do is to put a bolt or a lock on the top of the sliding door so that thieves can't simply lift them straight out of their tracks. Another thing I'd like to say about windows to people, 
especially old people who, who might see it as a sense of security, is that w uh, window screens of any sort, insect screens, are no deterrent to thieves whatsoever. Susan, if you don't want bars and fences, what's the alternative? There's a couple of alternatives. One alternative that people who haven't got much money have been using is Neighbourhood Watch. But I'd like to issue a word of warning about Neighbourhood Watch. There's no point just putting stickers on your windows if you aren't really cooperating with your neighbours, if they aren't really looking out for you and you're looking out for them. And secondly, in some suburbs where everybody leaves at nine o'clock and comes home at five, there isn't anybody to watch. So Neighbourhood Watch doesn't work particularly well in those sorts of suburbs. Now, if you do have lots of disposable income and you're worried about security, you don't want locks and doors and bars all over the place and high fences, you might think about electronic surveillance of some sort. And that can range from an alarm system to closed circuit television, depending on how much money you've got to spend. Susan, how do you respond to people who might say that to adopt your suggestion would be to virtually give up privacy? Well, People think of their homes as their castle, and I can understand that they don't particularly want everybody looking into their backyards. The trouble with privacy is that it comes at a price. Uh, it depends also to an extent on where you live. If you live in a very robbery-prone area, I think...